Coming up on Techzilla, the prettiest DIY media player ever. DroboFS, perfect home server or overpriced NAS substitute. Unbreak iTunes, speed up your router with a vacuum and your hard drive versus 7.62 millimeter full metal jacket. So grab the punch bowl and fill it with Fruit Loops and Melt because Techzilla starts now. This episode of Techzilla is made possible by Go to Assist Express. Support smarter with Go to Assist Express. Netflix. Go to netflix.com slash techzilla for your free trial membership. Squarespace. Get your internet on at squarespace.com. I'm Patrick Norton. I'm Veronica Belmont. Welcome to Techzilla. Hands-on reviews the latest tech and how to make the most out of the gear you've already got. Whether you're a beginner or tech support for your friends and family, if you've got a question about tech or the best brand of hot cereal you can boil, mm. we've got an answer for you. Cool. <laughs> and if we don't, we'll track down somebody who does. I'm into the quality oatmeal, by the way. Just I love oatmeal. I eat oatmeal every morning. It keeps your heart from exploding out of your chest. It's true. Good mm -hmm. for the cholesterol. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, welcome to a special Labor Day edition of Techzilla. Uh, it's special because we're taping it in advance, so there's no news. I mean, well, there might be news this week. We just didn't finish the time travel machine in time to find it all out, you tell know, you from the f from the past. When we finish it, we could totally use it to figure out when the Browns will finally win the Super Bowl, and we could clean up in Vegas. Yeah. Or actually, you know what we could also do? Go forward to September 1st, mm -hmm. which is actually when the new Plex 9 software and iOS apps are going to be revealed. If you haven't seen Plex, it's a media center based at XBMC for the Mac, and it just got prettier. Ooh. Especially if Plex 9 skins, the ones they were showing out on the blog a couple weeks ago, are as easy to set up as they are on the eyeballs. Nice and shiny. It's very shiny. Well, like yet it. another, like XBMC once again taken to another level of existence. Indeed. Mm -hmm. Well, Greg's got a great question for everybody out there. He says, hey Patrick and Veronica, huge fan, love the show. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Greg. I was wondering if you guys could recommend a good program that would allow me to surf the internet anonymously. I would also like to change the country of origin of my IP, or maybe a site that would allow me to do this. Thanks. Hmm, hmm. Greg in <laughs> Illinois. What are, you do? what are you up to, buddy? I don't know. What are you doing over there? I'm trying huh? to get curling results from uh, curling video from Canada. Maybe he's That's... trying to watch some some Hulu of Finland and he can't get access because his IP says he's not in Finland. <laughs> I hate it. I just that made happens. that up. I mean, I don't know. Well, there are tons of different ways to anonymize your browsing uh, from websites like Anonymizer to Tor, uh, the Onion Router that bounces your IP requests around the internets before randomly choosing an IP to send them from, um, to Patrick's long dead favorite, Zero Knowledge Freedom, and the new in private browsing. In IE. And about a billion others. Uh, so, look, in terms of changing your IP of origin for just a country, the easiest to do is to find a proxy server in the country you want to mm -hmm. pretend to be in. We've talked about that before. You can find lots of information about that on the internets. But I gotta say, I'm curious what the Techzilla crew uses when it wants to go undercover online. Just favorite emails with your favorite way to get your anonymous browsing on Techzilla at revision3.com. Is the email address. I've seen one called, um, I believe it's called Hide My. If I'm talking about a donkey, I'm allowed to say this word, right? Absolutely. It says hidemyass.com. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and you can use their site to actually mask your IP address. So you can try that one out. I'm pretty sure that's what the URL is. Billions. It has ass in the word. It can't be that hard to find. <laughs> Meanwhile, one resourceful viewer has figured out a way to speed up Wi Fi with a vacuum. You got to read this one. It's so awesome. All right. Termite writes, Howdy, Texilla crew. I've got a little tip for anyone having trouble with their Wi Fi speed. My laptop was getting extremely poor wireless performance. Even watching low res YouTube videos was aggravating. At first, I figured that it was just some obnoxious neighbor hosting a bunch of torrents and sucking down the neighborhood's cable bandwidth. But I wasn't getting the same problem on my desktop, which is connected through good old trusty Cat5. To confirm, I ran speed test, and wireless connections barely reached 750 kilobits per second, while hardwired connections got 18 to 20 megabits per second. Even ping times to other local devices on the wireless were abysmal. The problem even affected my BlackBerry, which had its battery life shortened to about five hours of standby time with the Wi-Fi radio on. Rebooting my laptop, the router, and Comcast modem didn't help, so I thought it might be something causing interference, like a microwave oven. While moving the router around to get a stronger signal, I noticed that it was rather warm to the touch. 
On a whim, I turned off the WPA encryption to see if that helped. Lo and behold, it did. I surmised that dust may have accumulated inside the router, causing it to heat up and slow down the encryption decryption process. So I grabbed a vacuum cleaner hose, put it up to the side vents, and let her rip, sucking all the dust right out of there. Problem solved! 18 megabits on Wi-Fi once again, even with full WPA encryption, and my BlackBerry can stay on for days once more. Moral of the story is, just because a router is chugging with its wireless throughput doesn't mean it's dying. It might just need a little breather. Love the show, guys. Keep it up. Thomas Termite. <laughs> I know Roger's going to be Ooh, vacuuming hello. out his router after the shoot tonight. He's had some, <laughs> his, his router speeds have been slowing down at home, so ah. he'll be a good test case for this. Uh, WPA encryption, you should know, uh, well, first of all, you should be running some kind of WPA encryption on your Wi-Fi network at home, unless you're leaving it unlocked for guests and nefarious people wandering through yeah, your neighborhood. I think he was. He was just testing to right. see if that was slowing it down. I, I'm just saying, like, here, here's the thing, like, for, especially for, like, newer Wi-Fi chipsets have the encryption built in or accelerated by the chipset itself. Right. Older ones, where it basically sits on top of everything else the router chipset was doing. Turning on WPA can slow the router down somewhere between 5 and 30 percent. Ouch. Yes, that's going from like 18 megabit to 12 megabit. That would be to suck. Um, newer Wi-Fi chipsets, like I said, uh, actually have it built in, but basically if your router is a lot faster, WPA off, uh, WPA off, which I'll say that instead of smirching it all together, getting a new router can actually make for a nice bump up in network speeds. And yes, this is the only vacuum we have in the building. <laughs> so we'll be testing out this router later on. <laughs> that doesn't suck. This is the dude that's vacuuming. I'm going to put this down before one of us gets hurt. Yeah, careful with that, buddy. Still to come, <laughs> does our Drobo love throb on? We talk Drobo FS when we return. But while we've got your attention... You don't know about Netflix? They deliver movies straight to your mailbox. Actually, they deliver it to your home, periods. They save you time, they save you money, they save you hassle. As Netflix Unlimited member, you get DVDs by mail on about a single business day. Plus, this is the cool part, you can instantly watch thousands of TV episodes and movies streaming straight to your PC, your Mac, or onto your TV via a Netflix-ready device like the Xbox 360, PS3, the Nintendo Wii console, and a bunch of Blu-ray players, and the Roku box, and some other cool stuff you can bolt onto your HDTV. Here's the deal, you get to watch as many movies as you want online. And shipping is free if you want to do the DVD or Blu-ray thing. Never any late fees, never any due dates. Watch it over and over and over again. Seriously, folks, get unlimited movies two ways. Through the mail or on the internet for just $8.99 a month. As a new member and a TechZilla viewer, you can get a free trial membership. Do yourself a favor and go to Netflix.com slash TechZilla and sign up now. And please support TechZilla by supporting our sponsors like Netflix.com slash TechZilla. Looks like it's time for another website we just can't get enough of. A website that we just can't stay away from because it's too useful, too funny, or just too darn irresistible. This week's pick, Mailinator. Mailinator does one thing, and it does one thing very well. It gives you a temporary email address that you can give out to people or websites that's totally anonymous. In fact, you can't even reply to email from this address, but a lot of times you don't even need to. Here's how it works. Anytime you need a quick email address, maybe for testing out a website you know you probably won't ever use again, just use any name or word with the at Mailinator domain after it. For example, website pics at Mailinator.com could be my temporary email, and any email sent there would be visible to me for a few hours on the website before it's automatically deleted from their servers. Anyone else with that info would also be able to view the emails, since the name you pick is what you plug into the website to access your mail. There's no sign-up needed, but there's also zero security. This is only a temporary email addy that you would use for one-off purposes. It's not going to replace your normal email in any way, shape, or form, but it may cut down on the amount of spam you're getting from websites you'll never go to again. Check it out today at Mailinator.com, and thanks to Nathan Gomez on Google Buzz for the suggestion. Wojo writes in, a while back you spoke about your passion for the Drobo. Is that love still going strong? I've kept my eye on the Drobo for a while now, and I'm currently looking at getting the Drobo FS. What are your thoughts? Thanks. Mike, also known as Wojo. Well, for folks not familiar with the Drobo FS, it's a Drobo storage box with a gigabit Ethernet networking built in. It replaces the Drobo share in Data Robotics lineup. Short answer, yes. Our love for the Drobo is still strong. I use a Drobo at home, Mike. 
Veronica uses a Drobo at home. We both love them. It is the easiest storage to upgrade ever. If you're talking about bulk storage, right? Mm -hmm. So everybody's like, oh, I could buy a NAS and it's $200 a buck. Like, I, I, I could save $200. And it's like, yeah, I know. You can get a RAID 5 NAS box. It's cheaper. And here's what happens when you fill your RAID 5 NAS box. You buy a second RAID 5 NAS box. You fill it with bigger hard drives and you transfer the contents from NAS box one to NAS box two, or you run the two NAS boxes side by side because most NAS boxes require you to rip all of the drives out and throw new drives in. Yeah. <laughs> to take our known Drobo love out of the equation, uh, we asked Robert Heron to review the Drobo FS for HD Nation. He's been happily using a Netgear ReadyNAS NV Plus for years and routinely streams Blu-ray rips right over his home network. Which is totally it, it, legal because he paid for them. Yeah, anyway. and if Kaleidoscape can do it because they charge their customers a gigantic amount of money, well, you, let's not even get into the whole. Yeah. Yeah. So he's routinely <laughs> running uh, 20 megabits per second from his NAS to his media PC. He was getting 55 megabyte per second read speeds, which blew the 35 megabyte per second max speed on the aging ready NAS out of the water. Uh, so the read speed is pretty good. Yeah. Writing speeds were averaging 16 per second average when writing large files, a bit slower with lots of smaller files. Yeah, so that's like, you know, it's, we're talking about asynchronous read-write speeds, which is pretty normal for almost any drive. Yeah, um, uh, Drobo FS also has the Drobo apps, um, and for more of that, we're going to point you all towards HD Nation. Yes. Because you guys have, have done the work on that one. Well, Robert did the work. I just enjoyed <laughs> it. 700 bucks, or 699 Sounds expensive, but upgrading by yanking a drive and sliding in a new drive. Basically, like, here's the deal with the Drobo. A drive dies. It's got parity data backed up on there. You can put a second drive in there. The uh, Drobo FS has five drive slots. You can set it up so you can actually lose up to two drives, which is pretty cool. Uh, and I think basically having to slide in a drive and it basically does all the work magically and flashes lights on you. Everything's green. When a drive's getting too full, it starts to go yellow. When a drive's dead, it goes red. You yank the drive out, you throw a new drive in. You want to upgrade, you yank the old drive out, you put a new drive in. It's pretty slick. You, you lose some of your capacity for the parity data that allows you to back up your drives, but you would do that normally on any type of RAID 5 NAS, which is the kind of NAS you want because it'll actually protect your data and not just stream quickly. So, in short, we still got the Drobo love song playing in our little hearts. Right here. Coming up next, we'll help a viewer with his troublesome iTunes, but first... We've all been there, you're on the phone, you're trying to help somebody do something really simple in the computer. Fixing it over the phone, it's a nightmare. Last thing you want to do is waste half the afternoon driving to somebody's house to fix the problem in person. This is what you should be using. Go to Assist Express. It's easy and it's affordable. It is the best way to remotely view and fix another computer. With Go to Assist Express, you can see and solve the problem. You don't have to be there in person. It's so nice. You're going to amaze your customers and your friends and your family by solving problems on the spot. Matter of fact, you can even provide service when customers are away from their computers. Do yourself a favor. Try Go to Assist Express free for 30 days. For this special offer, just visit gotoassist.com slash techzilla. That's gotoassist.com slash techzilla for a free trial of a product that's going to make your life easier. And since GoToAssist Express is all about computer help from a distance, we're going to see if we can help someone out remotely. And that someone is Jerry Garza. Jerry, welcome to the show. Hi. How are you? I understand you're having some issues with iTunes and Windows. What's going on? Yeah, well, I keep getting this uh, weird alert that says, well, if you can see it on my computer, <clears throat> it says the iTunes library file cannot be saved. You do not have enough access privileges for this operation. That's annoying. So that happens with pretty much all the music you try to play? Yeah, well, it tries to save it, I guess, and it, it can't, so it gives me this, and it's been giving it to me constantly. That is a pain in the butt. All right, well, we're, we're going to try a few things and see if we can't help you out here. So I have okay. control over your computer now. So the first thing I want to try is to run iTunes as administrator, and the way you do that is right-click on iTunes, and then just do run as administrator. Now, I know your problem doesn't come up. There's nothing we can do to actually force the issue. So we'll just see if that window pops up again while we're working. And we'll try a few other things to see if that helps in the long run as well. Um, the next thing I want to try was to apply permissions to a specific file or folder. And we're going to use your iTunes library for that. So we're going to scooch on over to your iTunes library. And I guess we'll just do the whole folder here. So you want to right click on the file or folder and then go down to properties. Then we're going to go into the Security tab, and we're going to Edit. This is all your list of users and groups that are on your computer right now. 
All right, well, I'm looking at your user here, and it seems that you have all the right permissions you would need in order to make changes. So that shouldn't be the problem. Let's try off another thing. We're going to turn off user account control. And to do that, we want to get into your control panel. All right, next we're going to go into your user account settings and try to change some of your um, control settings here. Yeah, I was going to scroll down all the way to never notify, but it looks like it's already there, so that's not the problem. All right, as a last ditch effort, we're going to try to get rid of that extra administrative profile that you have on your system. Uh, is this the one here, the one that's named random? Yes. Okay. Let's delete that puppy. We already stripped the password off, so we don't have to worry about that. Okay. Don't. Oh. All right, so we can't seem to delete this administrative profile. Um, where'd you get your computer from? Uh, I bought it at Best Buy. Was it one of the display models? Yeah, it was the ones that uh, the general public can use. Okay, so that's probably what it is. They've locked down this profile so that people can't use it. So what I think you're going to have to do is back up all your vital information, get all your files off of there, off of there, and just wipe the computer completely and start new. Mm -hmm. And that will definitely solve your administrative problems for sure. <laughs> Does that sound good? Yeah. He's like, no, it doesn't uh, really do sound good. <laughs> Because, like, basically, all I, all I need to know is just uh, if there's a way to save all of the information on the music from iTunes, like the ratings and stuff. Yeah, your iTunes playlist file, it's, um, let me grab that for you. I'll show you where that is. There is a file, um, it's under your iTunes library. And it should store all your information here. It's the database file. This one right here, if you copy that, mm -hmm. it'll say it should be able to save all the metadata, like your ratings and everything like that. So just load that into the so file, copy that into your next iTunes folder, and then when you open up iTunes, it'll read that automatically. So if I just like say copy and paste the entire iTunes folder mm -hmm. into like a hard drive and then copy back to the computer, it'll all be saved. Correct. Okay. Okay. And yeah, if sounds good. I can do that. And if any users out there have any suggestions for deleting that errant administrative profile or for solving his pop-up issue, let us know. Texilla at revision3.com. Thank you so much for being on the show, Jerry, today. Thank you for trying to help me. No problem. Coming up next, we've got some more viewer questions, but first... Squarespace.com, people. It's a publishing system for anybody looking to build a blog, a portfolio, pretty much any kind of website that is beautiful and full of functions. With blog tools that allow you to update from your iPhone on the go, hassle-free imports of sites from other environments, robust stats, and quite a bit more buried in easy-to-access form, Squarespace makes it painless for anybody to build and maintain a website that you could only dream of or pay a lot of cash for on other platforms. And if you have coding experience, Squarespace lets you delve into the code and customize things even further. Tens of thousands of people all across the internet have been using Squarespace for years, and their already great service is only getting better by the day. Do yourself a favor, head over to squarespace.com. You can score a 14-day free trial, and if you decide to stay on Squarespace, do us a favor, use the promotion code TECHZILLA. You'll score 10% off your order for the lifetime of your account. That's a nice, healthy discount, people. Squarespace.com, check it out. Manny sent us this email. He says, there don't seem to be a lot of good recent enterprise level antivirus software comparisons. The common ones like Symantec and McAfee usually do well on tests for their consumer products. Well, most people, including myself, find they fall short in real world applications. They're also highly rated for their corporate software on some websites, which I am not inclined to believe. Could you do a segment that compares some of these enterprise level solutions, as well as appliances such as EI and Estero offer? Thanks for a wonderful show, Manny. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure there are some things you don't want us reviewing, um, but we'll happily ask the IT mavens out there in the Texilla crew what they reco for enterprise AV protection. Yeah, here's the thing, like on a good day we have 30 people, like, and, and when I say good day, like when we have like people who host from other parts of the country and our friends hanging out in the office, we have a whopping like 30 people, and that's pretty much our entire test base for enterprise antivirus protection. Yeah. And if you're thinking about like, you know, I have 10,000 seats or 1,000 seats or 500 seats, Seats, it is enormously difficult to create a, a, a real world test environment for that. Everybody's network is different, everybody's usage profile is different. That's part of the reason why, you know, it's so it, they're difficult to test. So we'll ask people what they're using in their uh, college campuses, large businesses, big, you know, 
the enterprise layouts? Because I'd be curious to hear what people say, but this is not something we we have the tools, much right. less the, the, the clients. I mean, we can tell you what other people said, but we'd rather hear it from, from people who have been using it. Yeah. You know, we can look at other, like Google the answer, but. Yeah, well, we could Google, like, do you much good. we could say this one has this feature and this one has this feature, and you can go, that feature is useless, and we wouldn't know that because neither one of us administrate large IT environments or All large right. enterprise environments. Well, Dave in Missouri <laughs> writes in, for the past year or so, I've been using the Google Chrome browser. It works well, and I like everything, except that I can't find an easy one-click method to allow me to send a link to a page to someone using my email client. For email, I use Thunderbird, and I just wondered, is there an add-on or something that I'm missing in Chrome to allow easy sending of links? Right now, I have to copy and paste from the address bar into an email in order to send a link. Dave in Steelville, Missouri. Well, yes, there's a Chrome extension called SendLink that'll do exactly what you've asked for. I tested out with Mail as my default mail client, and it did everything automatically. Um, so having it work on Thunderbird shouldn't be an issue as long as it's your default mail program. For people using Gmail, there's an official extension by Google called Send from Gmail that does the exact same thing, um, except it uses web-based Gmail instead of your mail client. For Firefox users, take a look at Email This, which will work for most email clients and Gmail at the same time. Yeah, and Good it works perfectly. Just sent the name of the thing. It did it all. One take. One thing that did get me nervous was I haven't experienced a, a Chrome extension saying that this extension will look at all like data being sent over the website. <laughs> this extension. And I was like, hmm, that makes me a little uncomfortable. But then I realized that you know, if it's on the list of thing, like people will vote it down or it'll get right. kicked off the the extensions list if it's malicious. Good to know. I've actually been fascinated lately. Obviously, Google's getting better about the targeted advertising. Yeah. Because I've been noticing something. It's it's kind of funny because something's obviously watching the traffic from my system and then customizing ads to me. They're they're legitimate ads, but it's really funny to be on like you know Tree Hugger or something like that. Um, well, actually, no. Yeah, Zappos <laughs> has been getting me big time lately. Yeah, Every like, time I go on any site and there's a Zappos banner ad, I'm like, I was looking at those shoes. Yeah. Yesterday, hmm. and suddenly they're on this web page, or, yes. or I'll be on something. I, I said Tree Hugger, but but Tree Hugger wasn't the website, isn't the correct website. But I was on this website that was kind of like green and fluffy and, and rabbit friendly and whatever. Yeah. And there was like an advertisement for a, a, a site that sells gunsmithing tools. Oh, awesome! And I was just like, Good job. one of these things is not <laughs> like the other. Which brings us to Billy. Yes, it's definitely that was a good segue. All right, Billy has this to say about our segment on wiping hard drives. He states, "I just wanted to put in my two sense for data removal. I just take them to the gun range and hit them with the old, how do I say that? 308. 308 rifle? Yeah. Uh, probably not the best way, but it's the most fun for me. Love the show. You guys are great. And that is an awesome picture. As long as you're, you know, well, that's the thing that people are I writing in about. They're yeah. like, okay, you can use magnets if you never want to use the drive again, right. or whatever. And we're like, yeah, that's kind of what we were saying. I mean, in we, this, yeah, in the particular in these viewer, cases, they were like, they've, they've got, they've got all these hard drives. They've got all these hard drives that came out old. of machines that are old and yeah. slow. They may be dead, but they're still responsible for wiping the data off of them, right? Because, and so yes, we decided, like, or you, I think you made the decision. I offered up some ideas. You were like, find a driver racing service that'll give you services in kind, right? Because they're a non profit. Yeah. Um, drive shredders are awesome, but they're expensive. Professional, like super professional degaussing equipment, which is really fast, is expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, some folks online had suggested neodymium magnets. It's magnets actually are fun. A, Shooting them is more fun. Yes, uh, and it takes a lot less time than like opening up the drive and you know sc yeah. scraping off the surface of each individual platter. Or, or you could go the screensavers route and hit them with a sledgehammer. Yes, which which takes a lot of dedication because then you, again, unless unless you you get lucky and find one of the drives that's uh, a glass platter, mm -hmm. which when you don't realize that it's a glass platter because you can't tell because it's the same reflective surface as every other drive you've looked at it, and you whack it with a hammer and explodes into a thousand pieces. Is raining Not little bits safe. of glass over you and Kevin Rose. Not that I remember that moment, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Lots sorry. of fun ways. They're at you could you, you can melt them. You can dip the platters in acid. That's a really fun one. You end up with a little Ooh. pile of goo at the bottom of a beaker. Yeah. It's hard to get hydrochloric acid, and even harder to keep it safe in a house with cats. Indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, there are a few cooler geeks out there than Thomas Merritt, aka Tom Merritt, aka Ace Detect. In Revision Three, is unbelievably stoked to have him on board the network with Tom's Top 5. Every week, Tom comes up with a Top 5 list of the things you care about, from gadgets to sci-fi movies, well, to just about anything. Plus, every week, he's got a new stupid giveaway, and when I say stupid, I mean stupid, where you can win things like an iPhone case touched by Veronica Belmont. Hey, why is that stupid? Okay, you're right, that one's not stupid. The one I did was stupid. 
Yeah, yeah. You got to be like cool girl with an iPod Whatever. case. I got to be like goober boy. Every with a, Tuesday at revision3.com slash Tom's Top 5. Check it out, people. For everybody watching, we live on your questions. Email us, techzilla at revision3.com. Tech help, product reviews, how to's. And apparently shooting hard drives. You ask us, we'll do it if we can find a range that will let us on. But we need those emails, so don't be shy. Send them in to techzilla at revision3.com. Even better, send us in a video question. Think of all the fun you can have and the admiration of all your friends and family when they see your mug on our show. Just keep it to 15 seconds, upload it to YouTube, and send us a link in an email with video question in the subject line. And as always, you can visit our forums at revision3.com slash forum. Share your thoughts, ideas, or comments with other fans of the show. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Patrick Norton. I'm Veronica Belmont. Till next time, you've been watching Texilla. One of these things is not <laughs> like the other. One, one of these things, things is not <laughs> like the other. Blah, 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 blah. Program. Program. Look, Program. Weasels. Program. Thank you. I'm looking at the wrong. Okay. Your Thank you. Out. Yeah. No. Yeah. Well, there you go. Can't fix that. There, you're perfect. One, one of these things, things <laughs> is not like the other. But you don't realize, Rogers. Quite some time ago, Veronica and I started recording the IFB. <laughs> We've been doing our whole separate podcast of, it's called Roger's Moments on Texilla. Texilla, behind the scenes.